After routine deliberation and mind making and amateur weather forecasting through the kitchen window, I step out onto the porch ready to get this over with. Two David Letterman toe touches, a few football high knees, and a slap of the belly starts my morning. <laughs> Bouncing out of the red gravel alley on my springy heels. Down the hill and across the street, I zag to a mouth of the path. The voices in my headphones guide me along, my feet metronomes keeping beat over twinkling rings of broken glass, spilled popcorn kernels, crumpled energy drinks. A lone shoe lies on its side, sticking its blue tongue out. I oscillate my head as the path rolls parallel to the winding river. Naked trees fray their fingers under the squinting sun, reaching for summer. Spring wells up, swallowing khaki patches of winter and green tide. Dandelions bobble on needle necks. In the distance, I see yesterday's turnaround point, the bridge next to the brick bathroom. Under the elbow of a tree beyond the bathroom, I bubble out and turn around, each step and advance past halfway. I talk myself out of just walking over and over. My final ascent up the hill takes everything I've got. My hood's broken neck drools on my shoulder. My parched lips gape. Snot dribbles across my victorious, grimace-shaped smile. My palms hold my hips upright. My sweatshirt peels off like, a, like dead skin, slumping into a soggy pile in the kitchen. Victory. I settle my side into the couch, sticking my tongue out, wondering how far I'll make it tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, this first poem I'm going to read is called When Old Men. Uh, it was in the last Paschal Petals, and it goes like this. When old men dance in sunlight, their gray hair makes them look wise. Their laughter makes them look young, and their joy brings out the child they've saved for these golden moments, held by bright eyes, wistful memories, all pain gone. When I was a young boy, there was a time my cheeks were covered in freckles. Now I'm in my 60s, and once again, there are brown spots. <laughs> they are not freckles. <laughs> Having each chosen a unique shape and an odd place to be, <laughs> my cheeks will never gather them all in. This is called uh, For Me, For You. I kind of wrote it for my wife. I wanted to chronicle the life of a snowflake from conception to death. But I found that wasn't possible. Instead, I painted portraits of yellow carnations on raindrops for you. It's called, I Could Fill This Page. I could fill this page with gold, but fear would be too heavy. I could fill this page with sunlight, but worry it would be too hot. I could fill this page with music, but not know how to play it. So I'll fill this page with laughter, and then watch the joy on your face. This one is called, Things I Have Made My Name Out Of. A to Z, so I just, okay, trying to get a crazy thing to write, so here we go. Things I Have Made My Name Out Of. Applesauce, Bob Wire, Cupcakes, dandelions, evergreen trees, fondue sticks, goose feathers, hilltops, Italian marble, jump rope, keychains, lemonade, metaphors, <laughs> nerves, optimism, pageantry, quicksilver, red roses, silent nights, tarantulas, umbrellas, violins, waterfalls, x-rays, yodels, zebra stripes. Uh, the title of this poem is called Broken. 
Death finds its place in everyday events. A druggie steals and sometimes kills to pay his debts by his fix. And even though his fingerprints are on her blood, two rocks cry out. There is reasonable doubt he killed her. But he didn't stop the beating or call 911. Both of their hearts are cold, but he still breathes. Second degree murder, life. Cats. <clears throat> Barn cats hung out around the milk bar and edges, hoping for a squirt, a drip, or spill, not tolerating a touch, let alone a pet, giving claw and tooth to any kid desperate for touching its anima. House cats desperately looking for touches for anima, purr and rub against the leg generating electric attraction. If they're like ours, that they can grab your leg. Mountain lions come looking for house pets to eat, <laughs> looking for lost habitat, but gaining new habits like nuns in the headlight of progress caught. T-Rex lies beneath their pads waiting, waiting to join all their bones to his in the dirt around the edges of eternity, not come, but warming. We walked today along Rapid Creek, saws loudly cutting, falling cottonwoods, snows melting, noonday sun, newly seen after long chill. Huge cottonwoods dropped huge branches unexpectedly after heavy snows. Lots of ducks violating the feeding ban, doing recycling on the walks. We walked on under cottonwoods, over former duck feed. Where will we be recycled? We do not report families feeding ducks, unhealthy white bread. We saw a happy dog riding in a baby carriage with smiling master. Many people walking said, hi, what a nice day, good day for a walk. We slipped occasionally on ice and snow, walking briskly on the flood plain. We picnicked across the street from where our friend's house was, washed away in the flood of 72, part of the park now where people walk. We walked today, slipping among memories and hopes, hearing saws and children laughing while lots of ducks slept. Others did one-legged yoga. And others strolled around, bonded in companionship. Duck pairs walked together along creek rapids, among sauces cutting down huge cottonwoods. Lakota families, too, picnicked here centuries ago, walked along the rapids. Huge cottonwoods dropped huge branches. Ducks, too, walked along the creek. And sun shone brightly on melting snows, joining the creek's flow. We walked and talked and joined the oceanic flow. <laughs>